Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed You in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and fail to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Heavenly Father has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, our strength, the battle of good and evil rages within and around us. And our ancient foe tempts us with his deceits and empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us up again and restore us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first Sunday of Lent, the Gospel always presents to us the temptation of our Lord Jesus in the wilderness. Mark's Gospel today, a very short version of that, presenting us with the fact. Of course, we know the details of that. But as we are tempted, it calls into question our allegiance to God. We must worship the Lord and serve Him only. Something we see exemplified in the first lesson from Genesis chapter 22. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 3. We will sing the refrain together and speak the verses responsibly. How many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you are a shield around me, O Lord. You bestow glory on me and lift up my head. To the Lord I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy hill. From the Lord comes still
I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear the tens of thousands drawn up against me on every side. Arise, O Lord, deliver me, O my God. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be upon your people. second lesson is the one we'll focus on for the sermon in a few moments from Romans 8. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Oh, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Please stand. The Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you, O Lord. At once the Spirit sent Jesus out into the desert, and he was in the desert 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Praise be to you. With one heart and one voice, let us confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. The hymn of the day is hymn number 200 in the hymnal, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Lord, in loving contemplation, fix our hearts and eyes on you. Till we taste your full salvation and your unveiled glory view. Amen. I think in many ways, we think in temptation in terms like this. Apple versus the cupcake. I know what I should eat. I know what's better for me both in the short term and in the long term. Yet, if it's just one, I know it's not going to hurt me at all. Perhaps another example along the same lines. It's interesting the connection between the two of them, huh? Yeah? If I have a tendency towards this, am I likely to do that? No. Thinking in temptations in these terms illustrates some of the basic ideas that there are in temptation, right? Temptation attacks are weakness. If I have a sweet tooth or a love of chocolate, it's so much easier for me to choose the cupcake over the apple. If I'm inclined to be on the lazy side, the couch calls me rather than the treadmill. We also see how, how temptation likes to lie to us, right? If it's only just one, or there's, there's at least as the same amount of sugar in an apple as there is in a cupcake, so... Can't hurt. I can just wait one more day. If only <laughs> this was the reality, the nature of temptation. It, these are just petty examples. We know the true spiritual nature of temptation and its spiritual danger. Consider that the devil even tempted Jesus in the wilderness today. A temptation that is almost exactly identical to the temptation that he placed upon Adam and Eve in the garden. But rather, whether the devil lies, or the devil attacks our weaknesses, or the devil brings us to doubt God's word, the devil in all of his temptations has one goal. And that goal is so that we doubt God's love. As we consider the words of Romans chapter 8 today, we learn that God's love conquers every temptation of the devil. When the devil tempted Adam and Eve in the garden, certainly the, the fruit was pleasing to the eye. But how did he hook them? He hooked them by getting them to believe that God was withholding happiness from them. That God was withholding something good. You will be just like God, knowing both good and evil. God doesn't love you because he has decided you should not know what evil is. As he tempted Jesus in the wilderness, again, we didn't have the details in Mark's gospel, but we know from the others. God must not love you. How could you possibly be hungry? Look at how God feeds everything, and your God, you can tell these stones to become bread. God says he'll send his angels way up high, jump, and prove that God says what he means, that he loves you, and he'll send his angels to help. Or standing looking upon all the kingdoms. If God only loved you, he would give you what I promised to give you if you just bow down and worship me. As we have all those rhetorical questions in that second lesson from Romans, Paul asks all those questions. We can see exactly the same in our life. When the devil tempts us to doubt God's love, even in that first most basic question, if God is for us, the devil says, how can God be for you? when he lets all these evil things happen in your life and in the world around you. But then he swings the other way. Who can bring a charge against him? He'll bring many charges against him. Look at your sin. Certainly God can't love you. Calling us to doubt God's love. Then he swings back the other way. What about the persecution and ridicule. Oh, what a loving God that is. And he calls upon you to follow him and then he tells you to go through this in your life. 
Everything in the world belongs to God. How come he doesn't give you what you want or what you need? He must not love you. This God claims to be the resurrection and the life. And lad, how could he, how could he let your loved ones die when he could have stopped it? I must not love you. Well, the government, they cause you lots of problems as you carry out his work. <laughs> Who established that government? He did. It's his fault. And right there, we see what the devil is doing as he gets us to doubt God's love. The ultimate lie. Blame falls upon God. That all the evil that would bring us to doubt God's love, the devil wants us to blame God. And that is a lie. Just think about it. If I feel shame and guilt when he brings the charge of sin against me. Why do I feel that? Because I think that God doesn't love me? No. It's because I've sinned. I've done something wrong to hurt my neighbor and I have sinned against God. Did God not hear me when he didn't give me what I wanted? No. When I prayed, I asked for what I wanted and not what God wanted. And when he gave me what he wanted, I was upset about it. Who is it that ridicules God's people? Is that God's fault? It's the sinful, sinful nature, the sinful reasoning of those who want to deny God, his existence, or maybe they worship other gods. Why do we face death all the day long? Because God said to Adam and Eve, if you eat, you're going to die. No lie. And the Apostle Paul said, the wages of sin is death. We see what the devil does when he tempts us to doubt God's love. Because not only does he want us to not see God's love, he doesn't want us to see our sin either. The goal of the devil's temptation getting us to doubt God's love, is that he wants us to measure God's love on the basis of what sin does in our lives. And if we measure God's love based upon all the evil that sin does in our lives, then we'd have good reason to doubt God's love. But as the devil tempts us to doubt God's love, this is exactly where we find the key. How shall we measure God's love for us? Shall we measure God's love by what sin does in our life and all the evil that's around? Do we measure God's love by what we lack? Or the pain and grief, the sadness and the stress of life? Shall we measure God's love about how violently his people are persecuted? As the devil tempts us to doubt God's love, we find the measure of God's love only in one place. We find the measure of God's love only in Jesus. If God is for us, who can be against us? Let's think about that. What if God would be against us? That's what the devil wants us to believe, right? Just think about what it would be like if God was against us. Life would be way worse. And yet we have proof that God is on the sinner's side. And we have that proof in Jesus. Jesus is the only measure of God's love for us. And of course, we're not talking about just the generic Jesus either. But we see the love of God and that He gave His Son. A thought which ties us then to that first lesson we heard. How could God be a loving God if He commands Abraham to sacrifice His one and only Son? And yet that is what God has done for us. We would never, ever think of such things, giving up that which we love the most. In life. But this is God's love for you and me. He gives his old son for us. Why? Because I can't count the times that I have said, Why God? How could you God? 
Why are people so evil, God? Why is your work so hard? The devil has tempted me to doubt God's love, and I have. And you'd think that for one who doubts the love of another, that he would then withhold that love. Not God. God proves his love to us. In giving us his own son. His own son to be the sacrifice for our sins. All the times I have doubted him, all the times I have asked why and how, for each and every time I have doubted his love. His love forgives me. Maybe it's a bit on the sentimental side, but I have seen a picture of Jesus. And there's a caption underneath it that reads, I asked God, how much do you love me? And God said, I love you this much. He spread out his hands. And he died. This is the measure of God's love. In Jesus. And notice what this love is. And cherish what God's love is not. It is not feeling or sentiment that changes whenever God feels like change. God's love is his act to save us in his own son, Christ. And how does God convey that love to us? How does he tell us that he loves us? How do we know this? God speaks this in the word of forgiveness. God tells us, I love you, when you hear, I forgive you. How does God tell us this? How does God tell us he loves us? He tells us that in the splash of water that is the God pouring out his love on us in baptism, forgiving our sins. This, God's love for us. God tells us he loves us in the Lord's Supper, in the sacrament, in the most profound and deep and wondrous way. This, Jesus. God's love for us, spoken again. And here's what the devil doesn't want you to know. I could have nothing. He could take everything away. Goods, fame, child, and wife, he could do everything. Hate, steal, hurt, or kill, however you want to sing it. But he cannot take away God saying, I love him. In the word and in the sack. I certainly don't have to tell you how full our life and our world is of temptation. And how often we need this. As I carry out my work as a pastor, as I'm a parent, grandparent, employer, employee, if I'm retired sitting at home, when the devil backs me into that corner of doubt and fear, all I must know is that God loves me in Christ. Certainly we know the temptation is far more than cupcakes and apples. But today we have found an answer for temptation. For when the devil comes and tempts us to doubt God's love, we have the measure of God's love in Christ. And so we know that God's love conquers every temptation of the devil. Amen. Please stand. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. One who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen. We join us in Create in Me. Your presence, or take your.
seated. Please stand. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ and for all according to their needs. Heavenly Father, because of our sins, we rightly deserve to suffer both your curse during our time and life here on earth and your condemnation eternally. We plead for your mercy because you sent your one and only Son to suffer what we deserve. For his sake, forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now trusting that he intercedes for us, we dare to ask for your blessing, that you provide all that we need for body and life, that you protect us from all harm and danger, that you defend and deliver us from the devil, the world, and every temptation that would lure us back to the wide road leading to eternal death, that you give all who serve in government wisdom, that you grant courage and honor to those who protect us both here and abroad that you comfort all who face persecution bearing your name. For all who follow you and suffer loss, are depressed and lonely, afflicted, suffering or dying, give the assurance that nothing can separate us from your love. We give thanks for the fellowship we enjoy as brothers and sisters in Jesus, for the encouragement in every aspect of our unity, and this day especially. We thank you for your many blessings to the Grace Owls in their 25 years of service in the midst of our congregation. Finally, for the union with each other, with the saints in heaven, and with our Savior that we have in Jesus' body and blood, we lift up our hearts to praise you. Prepare now our hearts to receive the sacrament in faith and strengthen us through it that we may serve you and each other in Christian love. Into your hands, O Lord, we commit everything for which we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil who overcame us by a tree would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Oh 
Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. given in Jesus. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 The blood of Christ shed for you have received the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I may it strengthen you and keep you in Christian faith until life everlasting. Go in peace with joy in your hearts. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 You have received the true body and true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may it strengthen you, may it keep you in Christian faith until life everlasting. Go in peace with joy in your hearts. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. Amen. The blood of 
blood of Christ shed for you. The 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 blood of Christ shed for you. You have received the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now may it strengthen you, may it keep you in Christian faith until life everlasting. Go in peace with joy in your hearts. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 You have received the true body and true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now may it strengthen you. May it keep you in Christian faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. Joy in your hearts. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 You have received the true body and true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now may it strengthen you. May it keep you in Christian faith until life everlasting. Go in peace with joy in your hearts. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. received the true body and true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now may it strengthen you. May it keep you in Christian faith into life everlasting. Go in peace with joy in your hearts. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. Amen. Please stand. We join to sing the song of Simeon. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. O God the Father, source of all goodness, 
In your loving kindness, you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Hymn number 116, In the Hour of Trial. Body. 